Hey, this is Mikko, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the new features that are available in Procreate 5.0. And this update is free to all users who have already bought Procreate, so it's basically just free cool stuff that you get to use. What I'm about to show here is the beta version of the Procreate program, so all features are not like finely tuned and final yet, so that's just a disclaimer. So if something is changed in the final version, that's just because they are still in development and this update hasn't been released to the public yet. You are going to need to update your iPad to iOS 13 before you can install this update. And that iOS 13 update is quite a big patch to the whole operating system, so I recommend that you start doing that right away and just back up all your artwork. Because when the update comes, you don't want to be waiting for the iOS update to go through first. So the first thing that I looked at when I opened the Procreate 5 is this new exclusive category of brushes, because they have added all of these new brushes to Procreate 5. And a lot of these brushes are... If you have seen my video about how to create the perfect brush for digital painting, you will notice that a lot of these have the same features, that the pressure is set to size and opacity. And they all have these beautiful textures that are not too distracting, so that you can create an entire painting using just one of these brushes. And I highly recommend you do that first before you start mixing them, or maybe even question if you need to mix them at all. I'm a huge proponent of like having just less tools and hassle in your painting process. And the way that this update is designed, I'm very relieved to see that there's no additional clutter to painting. It's just features that will make painting faster. That makes me really happy to see. Next painting that I'm going to be doing is using this Larapuna brush. And if we click this, we are gonna take a look at the new brush settings and that whole new window that is for brush settings. So you see that it's not in the same little box anymore. There's a whole screen for creating brush settings. And in this screen, you have much better view of all the different options that they have added. For example, if you go to taper, you will see that the taper slider has been changed completely to reflect how it actually looks like when you adjust the taper, the beginning and end of your brush. And I think this is a much clearer way of communicating what this actually does to the brush stroke and how it's going to affect the look of the brush stroke. This was already previously in Procreate, but the way it was presented was just as a normal slider like all the other sliders here. And this I think gives a better idea what it actually does. If we go to the grain tab of brush settings, you will see that there is the grain that was before, but now there are new settings including the blend mode of the grain itself. So you can set a blend mode for the grain and this will greatly vary the look of your brush stroke depending on what you choose for it. So this way you can get more out of the same the same texture that you already have for the brush grain. So you don't need to create endless amount of different grains if you can just achieve the same look by adjusting the blend mode of that grain. In the rendering tab of the brush settings, there is a wet edges slider now. This adjusts your brush to have wet edges, and this is a great way to build up that texture. I used this setting in the previous video I made, and I will give a link to that in the cards. There is also this new experimental blending mode, like glazed accumulative modulation, but I'm going to wait until the manual is updated to give you full details of what this actually is, because at this point it would just be a guess and I don't want to give false information. In the wet mix panel, there is a lot more detail in how you can create like oil painting like brushes. And these are really handy for when you want to do smooth blending, for example, for skin or for hair, or clouds or whatever where you want to have that painterly look. These are really handy tools to have. The most talked about feature of Procreate 5 so far online has been color dynamics. And color dynamics work pretty much the same way they do in Photoshop. So you can just 
adjust hue jitter or lightness jitter and you can create a lot of texture with a single brush stroke and one selected color. But if you look at it down here, you can see that there's also secondary color option. And that means that you can now pick two colors, one primary color and one secondary color. And if you, for example, adjust the hue jitter to pressure, so that means that the more you press, the more of that secondary color comes in or vice versa, depending on what settings you put in here. If you like your painting to have a lot of hue variety, that's a very nice feature to have, but it does take some skill to control all of that. These color jitter features are really handy to have for me in the beginning phases of a painting, when I'm just like creating a mess and trying to find an interesting idea. It's a quick way to kind of create chaos and try to find something interesting in that. So for ideation process, this is really handy to have. But for final details, I usually turn these down or turn them completely off. So I have more control over what I'm doing. But I want to say really quickly at this point that I have been doing matte paintings for movies. And this color dynamics feature is really handy for painting photorealistic edits to the photos that you are putting in a matte painting. And this is because photos have this little color variation everywhere because of the way digital cameras work. So when you are doing little painting over a photo and try to blend them all together so that they look like they are all photorealistic, I always have a little bit of hue and lightness variation on and that kind of mimics that kind of pixelated look and when you flatten all the layers and blur it a little bit, you won't be able to tell where your brush strokes are. So this is also very handy if you want to do photorealistic matte paintings. For tilt controls of the Apple pencils, it's now visualized in a different graphical way. So you can see what the actual angle is in addition to the number of the angle. And I think this puts it more into perspective of just how much you have to tilt the pencil to have that variation effect of it. I use a lot of tilt in the brushes that I use, for example, for sky and clouds. And when you have tilt option in your brush, that this usually adds that extra amount of control, so you don't need to keep switching different brushes, that you can create a brush that is so versatile that you can create everything with a single brush. And for me, tilt is one of those features that I use for those special things like blending. And then when I have it set to tilt, I always have an access to kind of like softer brushes, even if like with zero tilt, it will create this sort of like sharp line. One of the cool features that I didn't expect this to have and something that I haven't seen in any other painting application is this. You get to set your own kind of icon and stamp label for the brush that you create. And for us artists who spend a lot of time creating our, our own brushes, this is a really handy way to just like have it be your own. So I'm gonna show you how that looks when you do your own brush. Let's say that you have done some adjustments to your own brush like this, and then you go to this about this brush. Here you get to do your own signature for it, and then you get, get to add this little icon for your brushes. And that's just a cool way that you can brand your own brushes to have basically all your own stamp of approval. And it will prevent other people from stealing your brushes, which I find annoying because I spend a long time creating my own brushes and I just like this feature to kind of like call my brushes my own. Let's look at the different settings on the top left menu. If you go to this adjustments panel, you see that there is now this clone tool that wasn't previously there. And this creates this sort of circle on the screen. And what this circle does, it's going to sample whatever is in this circle to be the texture of the brush that you are creating. So I'm going to create a really small brush and I'm going to set the strength to maximum. And I'm going to take out one of these eyes of this star character. And I'm going to sample the texture right next to it to have the same colors. 
And this way you can like fix small parts that you don't like in your painting without going through the trouble of creating multiple layers. And this is just a time saver. This is a finished piece that I have already done. You can see a painting process of this on my YouTube channel. But I just wanted to really quickly show you a technique that you can use with this clone brush. Because I've used this clone feature to steal the contents of many of my old paintings. So the good thing about this painting is that it already has like harmonious colors because I've spent all of that time thinking about it. But now when I'm starting a new painting, I don't have an idea what I want to do. So what you can do with old paintings is just like take them out, make a really big clone brush tool and then just clone randomly at different places clone until you have something that looks interesting to you. Like for example this. I mean, it looks like a mess, but I could paint over this now to make a completely new painting, using these colors and this texture as a base for a new idea. Just, if you make a mess, just stop when you see something that looks like it could be an interesting composition. So I just wanted to show that quickly to you, because it's something that I have used myself many times and it's just like a free brainstorming tool that is really handy to use. Let's look at the selection tools because they have added this whole new row of icons for selection tools. So you can press copy paste and have your selection be instantly on its own layer like this. And this is just a huge time saver because I did this illustration on the previous version of Procreate and all of these elements that are round and have shading, they are copy-pasted, but for that to happen, I had to go through the menu every single time to make that process. So now with a single button press, you can just instantly create more copies of the same thing. So that's a time saver, and I love all the time savers in here. I've done a tutorial on how to create animations on Procreate on this channel. So for example, for this animation, you can see a video tutorial on how I made this. And it's a pretty detailed tutorial, so you can create something similar by just following along those steps. But now if you go to preferences and hit this button called animation assist, there is this really cool tool that lets you see the animation in onion skins. So if you adjust these settings, you can see the previous and the next layer that is going to come after your animation frame. And this is gonna help planning your animation so you get that smooth movement when you see that where the next frame is going to be. By pressing play, you can see the whole loop without going into export settings. And previously in export, you would only see that tiny little thumbnail when you wanted to preview your animation. So this way you can see it full screen and you can even zoom into any place you want if you want to adjust those little parts of your animation. So this is good for even working because you don't have to close down the animation panel when you are working. When I made this animation, I made it on Procreate Pocket. So the phone version of Procreate. And what most people don't know, that Procreate Pocket has had an animation feature all this time that iPad version of Procreate doesn't have. And they have added this feature to the iPad version of Procreate with Procreate 5. And if you click the lowest layer, you can see that there is this option called Animation Background. And when you tick this checkbox on. For example, this animation has this sky that doesn't move during the animation. If I set it as animation background, I don't need to have the element of the sky in every single layer of the animation. The animation background is going to be rendered on every single frame of your animation without having it be on every single layer of your animation. So this is going to save you a lot of work and you don't have to do as many like group mergings when you are finishing the frames of your animation. It's also going to save you a lot of layer space, so you can potentially make a much longer animation with a lot more layers, because you're not going to be running against the memory limit of layers that quickly. In addition to this, you can also go to the top layer, and let's set this animation assist on, so we can see the preview again. 
And when we go to the top layer here, we can also adjust now an animation foreground. So this is a completely new feature that works like animation background, but it's in the foreground of your animation. So if we look at this frame in isolation, we see that we don't have the foreground element here. But if we have the animation foreground layer turned on, and now we look at the preview of the animation here, you see that it's being rendered on every single frame of this animation by just using one layer at all times. So this is one feature that is going to save a lot of frames and it's going to be possible to make longer animations using these features. Just use them smartly. So today I started doing this painting and to make this painting I at first made this palette and the cool thing about this whole color swatch icon now is that you can click the top of the palette and drag it to the side. Having your colors here on the screen at all times is going to make painting much quicker, especially in early blocking in phase. Since I have already considered that these are the colors that I want to use for this painting, I don't need to go in here and open the palette all the time, when I can just make brush strokes here and basically never get away from the picture and just keep in the kind of like painting flow state. And then when you are done with your colors, you can just press this X and you can always access them immediately the same way by pulling them here. If we take a closer look at the tabs, one of the new tabs is this Harmony. And because this is a beta version of Procreate 5, it's not done yet. But because of this icon, it kind of reminds me of those color widgets that let you see the complementary color or analogous colors immediately in different phases. So I wonder if this is something that can be used for those purposes. I hope so, because when I'm teaching concept art, this would be a really handy feature to show to students so that they can, for example, create an analogous color scheme for themselves and have it be interactive so I don't have to create a pre-made palette, because that's always more restricting than letting the students use their own creative freedom. Also in the top you can see that there are now these two colors. So this is the primary color and on the right that's the secondary color. And if you remember at the beginning of this video where I explained how the secondary color can work with the color dynamics, this is the location where you can adjust that second color. And finally I want to show you what's new in the gallery view of Procreate 5. So if you make a new canvas and press plus here, you have all the normal tools like putting in the resolution of your piece, but note that there's also now a color profile tab. And this is very handy when you are creating something specifically made for print. So when I'm creating, for example, a book cover or a poster or an album cover that is meant for print, press this thing on the right that has a small plus on it. And that is CMYK. K is for black, because in RGB, B stands for blue. So the K comes from the last letter of black. And these are the colors that are used by all the printers in the world. So having your painting converted to this color profile will always look slightly different. And to make sure that the print is going to turn out great on your client's end, I suggest that you paint the picture in this format in the first place, or at the very least, convert it to this color profile and then make sure that the colors look right. And always, of course, make a small test print before you send anything away. So for the purposes of my YouTube channel, this is really handy to have time-lapse settings in this menu that is within Procreate. Previously, these settings were accessible on your iPad settings itself under Procreate. But now you can adjust the playback settings here. So I'm going to use the highest playback settings so that I can provide you guys with a really nice and crisp painting videos. And finally, in the canvas properties, you have portrait orientation and landscape orientation. Personally, I have to say that I have done hundreds of paintings in Procreate now and never even once has Procreate guessed the orientation of my painting in a wrong way. So this adjusts the way that the orientation of your painting is when you save it into your gallery. So for whatever reason, if you want to lock it, you can use these. 
but personally I sometimes even flip the painting 180 degrees in the middle of the painting process and then just continue from there. So I've been pretty happy with the way it works so far, so I'm gonna leave these turned off. So that's a really quick overview, or as quick as I could make it, into what's new in Procreate 5, and I hope you're as excited as I am in what this update is going to bring, because I'm going to be able to do so many more cool creative things with these possibilities, and I especially like the way that they have kept the focus on speed and creativity, so there isn't too many like gimmicky overlaying menus that is going to make this whole program hard to use. That's one of my fears when I heard that Procreate 5 is coming so soon, and I think it's really cool that the main focus is on speed, and it's still going to keep the program really easy to learn for people who haven't done digital painting before. But on all this and future stuff when it comes to digital painting, stay tuned to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye!